At Far Yacht Design, we use our unique tools to design the most advanced powerboat hulls. Over the past 20 years, we've invested in the development of these tools to predict the performance of all types of watercraft. We'll show you how we use some of these tools. The Volvo Ocean Race is just one example of the environments that we design for and how we apply these tools. For the latest Volvo Ocean 65 One design, we were challenged to create a boat that was fast, safe, and cost effective. When we design power boats, we use the same skills, tools, and background as we do with sailboats. Britton Ward is Vice President and Senior Naval Architect at Far Yacht Design. He walks us through some of the design tools we use. We utilize a number of computational fluid dynamics tools that range from low fidelity panel methods to advanced multi-phase RANS tools like Fine Marine and Open Fun. As an example of one of these high fidelity simulations, let's take a look at some of the work we did on a 38 foot high performance center console powerboat. It's important to note that with these RANS tools we can simulate the boat operating at full scale which avoids any scale effects that occur with tank testing. This also allows us to look at much greater detail at the features of the hull, including details like spray rails and strakes and even ventilated steps. Even trim tabs and the thrust vector from the engine are all modeled and their impact on the running trim of the boat is captured. In these high fidelity simulations we model the entire environment around the boat, including the air and the water. We use a refined hex dominant mesh that allows us to capture the details of the design and geometry. In the flow field, the mesh is highly resolved in the free surface zone to capture the details of the flow phenomenon. The fluid flow equations are solved in 3D space, with each element able to contain a mix of air or water or a fraction thereof. This is commonly referred to as a volume of fluid method, capable of capturing the air and water mixes in spray and complex flow associated with steps and cavities. I've overlaid a contour slice on top of the mesh in this view, and you can see that the volume of fluid fraction is displayed. Red is all water, blue all air, and the green zone represents the free surface where air and water meet. This mesh was generated using the hex press meshing tool, which allows us to efficiently produce refined meshes on these geometries. You can see the mesh refinement close to the body and around the free surface zone that allows us to resolve the free surface interface. Boundary layer insertion occurs as part of the meshing procedure. Simulation utilizes a moving mesh that smoothly distorts as the boat sinks and trims as the boat accelerates in the simulation. This is an example of the type of post-processing output available for these high fidelity simulations. Along with forces and dynamic sink and trim, we can visualize detailed pressure loading on isolated parts or over the entire body. We can also resolve the complex flow around the free surface, including breaking waves and spray separation points. In this image, you can see the wave train, the spray sheets developing around the boat, the effect of the spray rails, and the water separating cleanly from the transom. This boat is simulated in a fully plating condition, so the boat's weight is supported by dynamic pressure without significant impact buoyancy. Because of this, it is very, it's a very dynamic system that requires careful tuning of the input parameters and computational procedures to produce stable solutions. Once we have a stable solution, we can use the post-processing to visualize the dynamic pressure on the bottom of the hull, which we can use to verify the flow around the boat is behaving as expected, and give us guidance on how to alter the geometry to improve performance and optimize trim. Using this tool, we can see pressure spikes introduced by the spray rail terminations, how the pressure in the step varies, and refine the step geometry and location to improve handling and performance. In this next layer, we see the total velocity magnitude over the hull form, which can also give us insight into how to alter the shape and details to improve performance. Because we have simulated the 3D air and water around the boat, we can also generate streamlines to explore the interaction of the air and water. This is a particular concern with the step vent geometries, where it's critical that the steps remain ventilated at speed, in turns, and in seaways. We can utilize these streamlines to show how the air and water are reacting to the geometry and assist us in optimizing the vent entry details. The initial setup of the mesh and the fine tuning of the numerics can be somewhat time consuming, but once everything's confirmed and validated, the settings can be automatically scripted and adapted to new design candidates for analysis across a range of conditions quite efficient. While tow tank testing has the benefit of real water and efficient testing times, it can be challenging to analyze geometries with advanced features such as ventilated steps and difficult to properly model detailed design features such as spray rails, step vents, and so on. The computational tools and hardware have advanced at such a pace that they can be used with high confidence in the analysis of all types of marine vehicles and can give the designer much more detailed insight into the flow phenomena occurring from even very subtle geometry changes. The results of our design capability can be seen in our first powerboat we've completed, the P-38 a 38-foot center console which features a powerful stepped hull with sheer sides. The P-38 comfortably achieves speeds in excess of 60 knots making it one of the fastest boats in its class. 